Esquire. Good morning, church, and praise the Lord. As you've been told, my name is Onyango Jack, and I'm born again. Uh, happy to be here uh, to fellowship with you. I want to thank God for giving us this opportunity to come and uh, um, rejoice in his presence, even as we hear from him and as he speaks to us through his word. Many thanks to our provost, who is also the VG, uh, Diocese of Nairobi, uh, together with uh, the leadership of the cathedral, for giving the TE fraternity this opportunity to minister today. Uh, many thanks also to you, fellow believers, for heeding God's call uh, to come to his house uh, and to rejoice in his presence. Um, our theme comes from uh, John, the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 4, uh, specifically verse 29, which says, Come and see uh, a man who told me everything uh, about my life. Um, before we delve into the theme, uh, may I uh, take this moment to introduce this Gospel of John. Uh, the Gospel of John was written by uh, John himself, who was a disciple of Jesus. And uh, the Bible describes him as the disciple who Jesus loved so much. You can see that uh, when you look at uh, John uh, chapter 21, uh, verse 20, 20 to 24, uh, about this disciple who Jesus loved so much. Now, who was this John? Uh, John, uh, together with his brother James, they were fishermen. Uh, they joined their dad uh, in the trade uh, of fishing uh, in Galilee. And uh, we see Jesus calling him, together with his brother James, um, when you look at Matthew uh, chapter 4, and also Mark chapter 1, you will see uh, when they were called by Jesus. This was just after Jesus had, Jesus had called uh, the other two brothers, uh, Simon Peter and Andrew, who are also fishermen. And so Jesus calls them, uh, tells them, come and follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And they immediately leave uh, their dad, Zebedee, and they follow Jesus. Uh, this John was an old man by the time he was writing this gospel. Uh, the Bible records uh, that uh, it, it, he was more than 80 years old and he was a church elder, a respected church elder, when he wrote this gospel. And uh, the gospel of John uh, is one of the, three go the four gospels. The other three, we have Matthew, Mark, and uh, Luke. And the gospel of John presents Jesus to us in a different way from the other three gospels. Matthew talks about uh, uh, Christ as the king specifically uh, targeted to the Jewish uh, audience. Mark presents Jesus as the servant uh, who dies on the cross for you and me. Uh, Luke presents Jesus as the son of man. Uh, John presents this Jesus as the son of God. And this is important because uh, it shows us that uh, Jesus as the son of God is the Messiah or the Christ who comes to save you and to save me, as you're going to see in a moment. Uh, so, what was the big subject of this Gospel of John? Why was John writing this Gospel? Or why did he write it? As I've said, he presents to us Christ as the Son of God, meaning that Christ is the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah who came to save you and to save me from sin. In other words, he points us to the direction of salvation, that through Jesus Christ, that is how we get our salvation and our redemption. So the Gospel of John is a call to faith. Those non-believers who still don't know this Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, the book of John, the Gospel of John points us to salvation. It's a call of faith to the unbelieving, uh, uh, those who are unbelievers, and it's also an encouragement to those who are already in the faith to continue practicing uh, their faith. So that is a big subject of uh, the Gospel of John, and we shall see in a moment how that relates with our theme today. But what was his aim of writing this Gospel? The big subject is that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, who comes to save you and me. But what is his aim? Why did he write this Gospel? John uh, wrote this gospel so that you can believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And by believing, you can then gain eternal life in him. That uh, you can find it 
when you look at uh, John uh, chapter 20, if you go with me to John 20, uh, verse 31, you will see the main aim as to why uh, John wrote this gospel. The Bible says, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing ye might have life through him. That is the main reason why John is writing this gospel to us, that we might believe that this Jesus, the Son of God, he presents to us Jesus, the Son of God, believing that Jesus, the Son of God, is the Messiah or the Christ who came to save you and me, and that by believing, you might have life in him. Jesus calls himself uh, the resurrection and the life. You can see that uh, in John 11:25 when uh, he is talking to Martha, uh, the sister to uh, Lazarus, just before he calls Lazarus back uh, to life from the dead. Now, uh, going back to uh, our theme today, the story is about Jesus encountering this uh, woman of Samaria uh, in John 4. And uh, Jesus, uh, after working for some time in uh, Judea, he decides to go back to Galilee. Remember, uh, Judea and Galilee, uh, Galilee is to the north, uh, and Judea was to the south, and Samaria was sand sandwiched between the two. So uh, Jesus, uh, after working uh, for some time in Judea, decides to go back to uh, Galilee with his disciples. And uh, it is told, it's recorded, that uh, the Samaritans and uh, the Jews had a very difficult relationship. They, they never got along very well. The Samaritans were half Jews, and uh, for that reason, the Jews felt like they were unworthy, and the Samaritans also had very difficult uh, uh, feelings towards the Jews. And so uh, it was not uh, easy for Jews to go through Samaria on their way to uh, uh, Galilee from Judea or from Galilee uh, to Judea. And uh, so Jesus had two routes that he could use here. He could either go through Samaria, or he could go through uh, another region called Perea uh, and avoid Samaria because he was a Jew. That is what Jews used to do. Uh, instead of going through Samaria, they could go through uh, Perea uh, to Galilee and uh, back to uh, Judea. But they, we, we see here that uh, Jesus decides to go through Samaria. And we, should, we are going to see for a moment why that was important. And so he goes to Samaria, uh, on his way back to Galilee, uh, comes to Samaria with his disciples, uh, reach, reaches a place called Sicha, a city called Sicha, uh, Jacob's well. And uh, being tired, uh, he decides to take a rest at the well and uh, sends his, his disciples to go to, uh, to the city to buy food. While seated there, uh, comes along this Samarian woman, uh, and it was about uh, the sixth hour of the day, High noon, when it was not usual for uh, people to go to the well and fetch water. So this, this woman comes along, and she's alone uh, at this hour of the day. Uh, it is recorded that probably because of her character, uh, she, she came along uh, without the company of other women. Usually women used to go to the well together, but here she comes alone. And she comes at uh, 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 high noon, uh, when it was not usual for uh, women to come to the well to fetch water. And she comes, and she meets Jesus, and uh, immediately a uh, conversation ensues. Jesus asks her to give her water to, to drink. And we can see from verse 9, uh, she push, pushes back, because here she's encountering a Jewish man, and they had a very difficult relationship with the Jews, as we've seen. So this conversation ensues, and she's pushing back. Jesus is trying to engage with her. She's, she's pushing back, as you can see from uh, verse 9. And uh, finally, Jesus tells her that if only you knew the gift of God, if only you knew the gift of God who is asking you for uh, something to drink. You can see that from verse 10. If I can read from verse 10 quickly. Chapter 4 from verse 10. Uh, if thou knewest the gift of God, who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So uh, the point here is that there is a pushback. This woman is engaging with Jesus. Jesus is trying to engage with her, and she's, she's pushing back. 
she doesn't want anything to do with Jesus until Jesus uh, reveals to her uh, what uh, is going on with her life. And she realizes instantly that she's talking to uh, a very special person, uh, the Messiah himself. And Jesus then reveals himself to her after uh, revealing to her what was going on in her life. And we all know the story about her, her life. So she comes to the realization, realization that she's talking to Jesus himself. And immediately she's transformed. She becomes an uh, evangelist immediately, runs back to the city uh, and tells uh, uh, the people in the city about this Jesus Christ. Now, uh, the point that we are trying to get to here is when God is trying to engage with you, do you push back? Do you, are you uh, full of reasons as to why you don't want to engage with God? What lessons are we learning here? Do you feel far removed from God that you don't want to uh, engage with him by studying his word? Do you feel like it's somebody else's uh, job to study the word of God and engage with him? Do you feel far removed from him, just like this woman of Samaria who was pushing back when God wants to engage with you through reading and studying his word? You want to push back, you're full of excuses that it is not my job, it is the job of the provost and the clergy to do that and not my job. And it was by divine appointment that Jesus had to go through Samaria and this woman had to come to the well at that particular point to engage with God. It is by divine appointment that you are here and God is speaking to you, God is speaking to me, that he wants to engage with you by studying his word. And that is why we are saying as TE that through the TE program, God is seeking to engage with you even as you study his word and as you, 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 you read his word and study it. He reveals himself to you. He engages with you that you may know him even better and that you can be, become uh, complete and perfect to do his will. That is what we are saying today as TE. God is willing to engage with you through his word. Do not push back. Do not give excuses like the woman at the well who was pushing back while Jesus was trying to engage with her. God is giving you this opportunity through the TE program. Come and see this Jesus who will tell you everything about your life, who knows what is best for you by studying his word. Remember, God has given us this gift of his word today. Jesus may not be with you physically like he was with the Samaritan woman, but God has gifted us uh, his word, which we have today. And he's telling you that he wants to engage with you as you study his word. And you get to know him better. Please do not push back like the Samaritan woman did. God is willing to engage with you and to reveal himself with you, I mean to you through his word. And today I want to thank the provost and uh, the, the, the TE leadership that through the TE program, we have three classes. Two are physical, one uh, happens every Sunday afternoon after the uh, services, another one happens uh, Monday evenings after work, and now uh, we are also introducing the online classes that you can study the Word of God at the convenience of your, 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 your office or your house or uh, to your own time, so that you have no excuse to push back when God is willing to engage with you through His Word. May we uh, allow God to engage with us, even as we study his word through the TE program. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.